just open my eyes that I may see. Lead me, oh Lord, won't you lead me? One hundred and fifty days. The good book tells us, we've heard this morning, that for 150 days the water flooded the earth. Noah was confined to his ark. Can you imagine that? 150 days being confined. Can you just imagine that? We don't have to, do we? We don't have to imagine it. Here's a little statistic for you, you know, you may have forgotten, I do like my statistics and I'm back with them. On March the 15th, 2020, this year, March the 15th, I stood before you. And indeed, on that morning, it was announced and decided that this church would close its doors on the basis of the virus. Today is July the 19th, 2020. 126 days later, 126 days we've been confined to our homes and unable to attend the house of prayer. We don't really have to imagine it, do we? We've lived it. And we've lived a part of history that many others have never lived before. And so when I consider today's uh, readings and service, as you know, I've started with Genesis. What better story for us to start with? Genesis chapter 8, verse 1 to 19. At verse 1, we heard three words. That's all. God remembered Noah. God remembered Noah. During the 150 days, we're told that the waters receded. Of the last 126 days, yes, we've sat through a situation which none of us have ever experienced before. We were confined to our homes, our doors shut, keeping outside a danger. Noah did exactly the same. Kept a danger outside the ark. God told him, make the ark. Go into the ark. Close the door. Same with you and I. Go into your houses, close the doors. I'll keep you safe. He said God remembered Noah. Let me ask you, my friends, have you filled your 126 days? Have you been like me? Can you count every little <laughs> section of your house? <laughs> do you know how many steps it takes to walk from your kitchen to the, to the other end of the room? I do. Oh, yes, because I've, I've trodden them a few times. In fact, I have a turret through my carpet now, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. I'll just have another look out the window, just in case I miss something. But unlike Noah, just consider Noah just for a second, my friends. There was no TV. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. There was no internet. There was no papers. There was no radio. He had him, the wife, the children, and the animals. We had the TV constantly telling us what was going on every second. We had music. You wanted to put a bit of music on. You could listen to the radio. You could sing a song to yourself. Well, I'm sure Noah may have done that himself, but however. We had a book. We had books, papers. We had things which could have filled our time, couldn't we? We were kept constantly in touch with what was going on. Noah wasn't. Noah wasn't. He had to peep every now and again at this little window. In the same way, though, God remembered Noah. He was with Noah. He was with the animals every inch of the way. And my friends, let me tell you something else. God remembered you 
every one of these 126 days, every minute, every second, every hour. Now, let me tell you, you might say, well, why, Lee? How does this? Well, I'm glad you asked. On that day 54, whatever was happening day 54, when you'd look through the window five, for the 500th time that day, what can I do, you thought to yourself, I've reached my end of tolerance. I know what I'll do. I'll have a look in that cupboard. I'll empty that cupboard that I haven't looked in for years. That was God remembering you. When you picked up a paper, that was God remembering you. When you listened to a bit of music, and it killed off 30 minutes, 40 minutes. That was God remembering you. Every single time, my friends, when we thought, I can't stand another minute of this. But something came up for you to do. God remembered you. He was with you. He stood beside you. He gave you the ideas, the thoughts, the conversation. Every time a friend knocked the door or rang the telephone, God remembered you. God remembered Noah in the ark. And God remembered you. And then at verse 15 of this wonderful piece of scripture this morning, we then read, at verse 15, God says, Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark. Come out of the ark, said God to Noah. My friends, today, God is saying the same words to us. Come out. Come out. Come out of your arks now. Would God have let Noah out if the flood was still about? No. Would God let you into the church today unless he, by his will, determined that it was safe for you to do so? We know he wouldn't. He wouldn't have kept us safe for 126 days to say, come out today, if it wasn't safe. God's saying, come out of the ark. Now, let's not be mistaken about this. When the door of the ark opened, which Noah opened in the faith of God, God spoke to Noah and told him when to come out. When the door was opened, do we think Noah burst out and went, da da went running down the ramp? No. He would have lowered it down very slowly. He would have looked the one side, his sons would have looked the other. And slowly the door came down. And they would have come out. Maybe with timidity. Maybe with some concern. Would the animals have suddenly burst out after 150 days, maybe four months? Some may. But some would have waited back a bit. Some may have waited a few days at the back. But they all came out. Because God said, come out. My friends, God is calling us out. Why do we come out? Why did Noah go out? Why have you come out today? And when and why will our brothers and sisters in the future come out in greater numbers? Well, our New Testament tells us why. Jesus Christ tells us why. Because he said, have faith in God. Jesus said, have faith in God. If you want to tell a mountain, pull yourself down and you do not doubt it, it will happen. But Jesus told us further, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Well, I want to tell you something very quickly, my friends, because I'm conscious of our time. I'm going to tell you something. Not only is it a wonderful day today because we are here and our doors are open again, that's a wonderful day in itself, but I'm going to tell you something else that you're experiencing right at this minute. March the 15th, when our doors closed, on the evening of March the 15th, I engaged in something which I'm sure many of you also did. I prayed to God. I prayed to God with my whole heart, my soul, as much as I could, that once again, our doors would be open. That once again, you and I would gather together here in this church at his will, to sing his praise and offer worship to him. And what we are seeing here today, my friends, is the answer in a prayer. Now, undoubtedly, we've personally experienced the answer in a prayer, but today we're seeing it as a group. We are sitting right this second in the answering of my prayer, and I'm sure yours. 
Have faith in God, said Christ. Have faith in Christ, in, in God. The naysayers, the non-believers may well say, it may have happened anyway, Lee. Can anybody read the future? Can you read the future? Can you tell us how long we'd have been confined? I think the answer is no. It is God's will that determines when. He answers our prayers. He answered mine, and I'm sure today he's answering yours, and we're sitting right in the midst of it. It's a wonderful day. It's a great day. And I'm just privileged and honoured to be sharing it with you all this morning. If we can take anything from today's message, my friends, take this with you. Never forget. Never forget. Always remember that God will always remember you. May God bless you. And amen. Leave me, oh Lord, won't you leave